Hi everybody and welcome to the Kids Drawing Channel. Today we're going to be drawing the Triceratops here and I've got him kind of looking kind of ferocious off to the side. He's got a big eye and he's got some horns sitting there and he's dripping some stuff off, off his nose um, and end of his uh, beak, kind of beak mouth that he's got there. And uh, the Triceratops is um, a really great dinosaur to draw. It's a lot of fun. He's got a lot of some interesting things on him. He's got some gentle curve lines for his horns and he's got these really jagged angle lines here on the side of his uh, head plate, I guess that would be called. And he's got some really deep curve lines. He's got kind of a protrusion here. I'll just kind of make a mark there um, with a piece off the side of his head. And he's got kind of some small feet compared to this huge body. Um, so I put him in a kind of a nice landscape and to draw him today I just want to review the shapes and the lines that we're going to be using to draw him. Uh, we're going to be drawing him, drawing him um, with actually some gentle curve lines and we have some that are going to be very curved. So if it's a very curved or very pronounced curve line it's that way. Uh, we might have some gentle curve lines um, that are just a little bit of a wave. And we're, we really don't have any straight lines, but we might, maybe on our horizons. And a straight line can be really skinny or it can be really thick, depending on how pronounced we want that to be. Uh, this is a suitable drawing for kids um, 6 to 10. And maybe some five-year-olds might want to try, try him as well. And so we've got straight lines and curved lines, and we also have angle lines. Angle lines are any line that bends so much it comes to a point. And we're going to be using some of those um, on that plate for his head and on the back of his body there. And look at that horn there on the front. We're going to put a big angle line there at the tip. And then we also have things called circles and dots. Now most people think of a circle as a completely perfect um, object, but circles can be any type of roundish object as long as it's empty. If I were to do a roundish object and fill it in, your brain is actually going to read that as a dot. So as we're drawing today, if you hear me say we're going to do a gentle curve line or um, a more pronounced or even a straight line, I want you to repeat those words in your, in your mind as you're drawing. The more reinforcement you can give your brain into the five elements of shape, which is a circle, a dot, a curve line, an angle line, and a straight line. Um, the easier it is for that impulse to go out uh, for your brain to tell your hand what to do. So we want that hand and brain to work together. We're not going to be telling ourselves it is a triceratops. We're just going to look at all the bits and pieces to put this together. And um, I've got a piece of paper here. Uh, you can choose to do your drawing in landscape mode or portrait mode. If you do it this way, you might have a little bit more room to put your triceratops, but your you won't have as so much room maybe to put some neat stuff in the background. So I'm actually going to draw it in um, portrait mode. So my paper's going up and down, but you can do it either way. And my eye is kind of right about in the middle of my paper. And I like to stop my drawings with an eye. So I want you guys to put, as we get going, I'm using a Paper Mate Flare black pen. Um, this works really well. As we're drawing today, um, just know that sometimes we make, um, you might make a mark in the paper that it, you're not happy with. That's okay. Artists do that all the time. Sometimes I have to reincorporate and change up my drawing a little bit, but there's ways we can move around that. So today we're going to be starting, I'm going to put a little tiny dot. That's where I'm going to start with my eye. And I'm going to do a gentle curve line to start the top ridge of that eye. Now don't make this too small and don't make it too big. If I have uh, an eye, if I try and draw everything really tiny, it makes it much, much harder to get the details in there. So give yourself a break and don't draw too small. And do a second curve line and I'm going to make it a little more curvy down below. This is the bottom part of his eye. And then I'm actually going to put two curved lines. I'm going to make a circle in the middle there. And inside that, I'm going to put one more circle. So I've got it on a bigger piece of paper. I've got this line, I've got this line. I put a circle in the middle, and then I did a second circle in the middle there. Okay? Now, to make my Triceratops look more real. I'm going to fill in this middle area, but I'm not going to fill it in all the way. I'm leaving just a tiny dot of white in that eye. 
And the reason I'm doing that, it's going to make my object look alive if I leave just a little bit of light shining on that eye. It makes him look like he's looking right at you. And I'm going to put a couple of little curved lines underneath it. He's got really got a lot of wrinkles on his face. Um, and let's put a much bigger curve line on top. And we're going to make it a little thicker here on this side. So I just kind of doubled it on the back side. And I'm going to fill that in. So I've got a really thick curve line on one side. Now, his horn actually starts right up above that eye. So I'm going to put a dot kind of at an angle, a little bit of an angle, put a dot right here, and I'm going to do a curve line that comes out. Now when you're first making this, it's going to look really big compared to his eye, but his eye is kind of small. So I'm going to do the horn in front. We're doing this one right here. We're doing that one first. I am going to do a really tiny angle line. That's a line that comes to a point at the edge. And I'm going to bring it back, make it a little bit thicker. And then I'm going to stop just a little bit because his horn is actually, his head is tilted. So we don't want it to go all the way back. We want to leave a little bit of a space. And I'm going to bring it back just a little bit, a little curve line, a little straight line. And then I'm going to just going to put a couple little angle lines in there. It's just a little bit of a break. So it shows where the horn attaches to his head. Okay, let's put that second horn. I'm going to come down a little bit lower. I'm going to do another curve line. I'm going to bring it out to the side, and I'm going to give it a little angle point at the head top and bring it back so it touches that other horn. This one's behind, so we did the one in front. And if you want to do a couple little angle lines to give it a little ridge there in front, that would be fine. Now, he's got a little bit of a space here. As I said, that head, he's kind of looking down, so we want it kind of in this direction. I'm going to start just up a little bit from where that horn is, and I'm going to do a gentle curve line. Now, I'm not taking it too far out because, again, I've got a horn that's going to be in front. So I'm going to do a much curvier line here in the front. And as we see these pieces and parts, and we're going to pull them together, I'm going to do a curve line that's going to come back. And I'm going to stop right there, do a little tiny angle line, give it a nice point, and bring it back. So there's his front horn. I'm going to pretend this line goes kind of all the way through and put a little dot here on the other side. Just pretend it goes all the way through and give it another little tiny curve line. And he's got kind of a weird beakish point on his mouth. So I kind of layered this little part where I had to start, stop here and then start again. And as I do this, his lip, we want to make sure it comes down far enough. It kind of comes to a point, comes back a little bit, and then it kind of leans down. So I did a little bit of a point, brought it up a little bit, and then brought it back down. I'm going to go ahead and put his nostril in next. So I'm going to put a circle but I'm turning it into a dot because I filled it in. That's his nostril. And I'm going to put a little curve line showing that it's kind of a ridge around his nose. And I'm going to put a couple of little curve lines there on the top of his, um, top of his nose. And let's give it a curve line where his horns touch there. Now, his beak, his beak upper lip does not it overlaps just a little bit. So I want to start inside just a little bit and I want to do a gentle curve line, but I want to bring it back and up. He's got this kind of curve that comes back. And then he's got this weird, as I said, little, little bony protrusion. So we're going to do a really curvy line here. I'm going to come up and curve it down, bring it out, curve it way back, and back to the side. That's one curve line, another curve line, another big curve line, and a gentle curve line. So I've brought it all the way back to here. Now I'm going to do the other part of his head. I'm going to come back up here to his horn, and I'm not going to start here. I'm going to bring it up just a little bit, and I'm going to do a curve line that comes up the top. So now I have this kind of huge fan-like piece. I have to connect all this. 
to make it look kind of cool, I'm going to show you a little trick here. Okay, I'm going to start down here. I'm going to do a little bit of a break, and I'm going to do a gentle curvy line. And I'm going to come up here and do another gentle curvy line, and another one here. This is to make sure that you get that shape, because if I were to tell you to do a zigzag, you might start doing the zigzag, and it might get really, really small. So we want it to kind of fan out in this direction. And I'm going to start back up here. I could do a little curve line, and I'm going to do some really sharp angle lines. Now you can do these however you want. We just know they're bony plates. So I'm not making them touch. I'm just kind of doing it in this area. They don't all have to match. They can do them in different shapes. You could have some big, some small. I can do a couple of small ones here. I just want to bring it all the way down until it connects. So I just did a real variation there. A lot of different type of, of angle lines going all the way across there. And he's got this really big, it kind of fans up this way. So I'm going to make, I'm going to do a couple little ridges here just to make it look like there is some movement here on the side of his jaw. And this line is actually kind of important. This is to me where he would be chewing. He'd probably have a big muscle right back there. So there's the head of our uh, pterosaurus. Uh, I couldn't even say it there for a second. Okay, so now. He's got a couple of other pieces. He's got a ridge of kind of some uh, of his neck and its chin. He's got a gentle curve line underneath here. So I did a gentle curve line connecting this fan plate to his lower chin. And I'm going to do one more. I'm going to make it real close and I'm going to bring it all the way back. And maybe when you're coloring this, you could color it. Uh, this may be a different color and that will really give it some depth. So I brought it back just a little bit. Now I want to show you, he's got this very muscular front leg at the very top, but as it gets down his leg, look how much smaller it is down here on the bottom. And then we've got his other leg here in the back. So I'm going to go over here to the side and I'm going to put a dot off the side back over here. So I'm going to go over here to the side and I'm going to put a dot and I'm going to put a dot here. This is the width kind of of his leg. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to overlap it just a little bit. I'm going to bring it down and then I'm going to bring it up front and then I'm going to push it out just a little bit and stop right there. He's got relatively kind of short legs. He doesn't have them too big. I'm going to go ahead and put um, his toes. He's kind of got toes like a um, elephant. So I'm doing a curve line here and I'm going to flatten it here on the bottom and bring it up. I'm going to do another one right next to it, a little curve line, flatten the bottom, and bring it and make it touch. So I've got the two toes, and he's got a gentle curve line. It's not too big here on the bottom, and then it's going to curve up. And as it curves up, it's going to have some little bumps in it. It's going to get a little bit bigger. And then when you get kind of to his knee, let's go ahead and put a knee in there. And I just did kind of an oval with another little curve line in it and a curve line over the top. That's kind of his knee. And we're going to maybe put some little wrinkles for his um, part of his ankle there, just like your hand kind of would have a wrinkle in it. And then I'm going to curve it out over here and bring it all the way up. So there is my first leg. His other leg is right behind it. Now you could have it kind of moving if you wanted to, but I'm just going to have it sitting right next to him. I'm going to come over here to the side. I'm going to mirror kind of what I did over here, but I'm going to bring it in a little bit shorter because it's a little bit in the distance. So I don't want them to line up exactly here on the bottom. I want them to be, this one to be just a little bit higher than the other one. If you want to put some marks in, if you want to put some little wrinkles in here, just put some little, little bits and pieces. Now, he has kind of a big back, so I'm going to come over here to the back of his ridge, and I'm going to do a curve line that comes up, and I'm going to let it go right off the page. And I think he's got a ridge, a plate of plates here on the back. So I'm putting some ridges up there. We don't know what his skin looked like, but you know what? I would kind of think he maybe would have some marks, some dots. So I'm just putting some little tiny smush circles. And this is kind of fun to 
color and make kind of interesting here on his back. And we've got to do his belly. So I've got kind of a double line I put on this one. And if I continue this line, pretend it goes all the way through and make it a little bit fatter and do a second one. So there is kind of my um, Triceratops body. That's all I'm kind of going to do with, with this one right now. But you know what? Let's go ahead and um, do this little drip coming off of his lip. I'm doing a curve line. I'm going to bring it all the way back and make it touch. It looks like a little teardrop. And I don't know where, right now he's kind of floating in the sky. So I'm just putting something kind of interesting here. I put like a little pond, and I'll show you how to draw this little pond and some rocks and some grass. But I want to have something in the distance, something in the background. So I'm going to put my horizon line. That's where the, the sun, I mean the sky and the land meet. Um, and you can put that wherever you want. I'm going to change it up from my other drawing. I'm going to make it a little bit higher. And maybe there's a long stream way in the distance. So I'm going to do a little curving line coming down. And to make something look really far away, if we make it skinny in the distance and make it a little bit bigger as it comes closer, it'll give it that perception of something being really, really far away. And maybe there's more mountains back here. You might even want a mountain, a volcano that's exploding. So I put some kind of mountains here in the distance and lots, lots of ridges and little peaks and that might have other pieces in the front. So this kind of makes it look a little more like a mountain. And let's have it go into this kind of stream bed. We'll bring it on over. And let's go ahead and put this pond in. Now on the pond, we can see the ridge here in the background a little bit better than what's in front. So I'm just going to do a, I'm gonna have them kind of stepping into that pond. And I'm going to, so I just did some gentle curve lines and I'm going to double that line in the distance so we can see it a little bit more. And as it comes to the front, it's going to touch and meet. So I think there might be grass. So I'm going to put some grass here in the front. So I'm just doing some curve lines. And I'm going to put some here on the back. And maybe there's some big rocks. Now, if you want to put a rock um, on your piece, gentle curve lines coming all the way down, but they have a flat bottom because rocks are heavy. So if I wanted to put another one over here, I would put more of a straight line to show that it's heavy and it's got some depth. So now I have some rocks and his water, he was drinking water, so I'm going to put a ripple. There it shows that he was drinking out of the water. You could put, maybe, you might want to put, maybe there's something big. You know, maybe there's a big fish or something here in the water. So I put a big fin in there. Something kind of fun. So in my sky, um, I could put these long, uh, skinny clouds in the sky. Or if you wanted to make it a volcano erupting, you could, you could actually have things coming out here and you could have lava coming down. Okay. And there's kind of my triceratops. So uh, this was the kids drawing channel. These are some free videos I'm posting and I'll have more videos on my website. Um, but um, this is just for fun. And let's see if we want to put a cloud up here or maybe there's a big dust plume. I put a cloud in the sky. Made it kind of flat on the bottom and made it kind of tall on the top. Again, I'm Miss Lois and the kids drawing channel. Thanks for drawing with me today.